Today's episode is brought to you by Rocket IT. Is your team still working remotely? Is it starting to look like a more permanent solution? Let us help you streamline that experience and increase productivity by creating a reliable network, increasing collaboration, and boosting security. Click the link in this video's description for more information about Rocket IT's Remote Workforce Roadmap. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Thrive. This is Colleen Frangos. I am your host, and I am with Rocket IT, fabulous organization here in Gwinnett County, and I serve as the Community Relationship Coordinator over there. And on today's episode, I've got joining me the fabulous Ginger Powell. Ginger, thank you so much for being here today. Me. Awesome. So Ginger is the Director of Development at the Gwinnett Medical Center Foundation. And this year, 2021, she has reached a fantastic milestone, 20 years. So congratulations, Ginger. Thank you. That's awesome. So I want to talk to you with our, with our as, as we have this conversation today, just what that's been like, what your journey has been over the past 20 years with Gwinnett Medical Center Foundation. How, how has that been for you? Yeah, so actually just last Friday was my 20 year anniversary. And that feels so weird to say out loud because it doesn't feel like I've been here for this long. Right. <laughs> but it has been a wonderful journey and I've had the opportunity to meet so many wonderful, caring and some of the most philanthropic leaders in this community that have just taught me so much about giving back. And collectively, we've raised over $80 million during that time that we've oh reinvested gosh. into the hospital campuses. Some of the highlights during this time for me have been the opening of Gwinnett Medical Center Duluth. It was really mm -hmm. cool to watch that come from the ground up to fruition. After that, we opened the North Tower on the Barnesville campus. The Open Heart Campaign was one of my very favorite projects because I don't know if many of you are aware of this, but Gwinnett was the largest county in the nation without an open heart surgery program. And this community rallied together like I have never seen before to make it happen. And that was just super exciting to be part of that. The foundations also participated in a lot of the different service lines. We've raised a lot of money for cancer care, a lot of money for neonatal intensive care, the sports medicine program, concussions, the list goes on and on. I mean, we've pretty much impacted every department in the hospital in some form or fashion. Most recently, we announced the completion of our next generation of healthcare campaign that raised $43 million. Wow. So that was huge for us. It was the largest campaign in our history, and it will definitely go down in my history book as one of the best things I've been a part of. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, most recently, we merged with Northside Hospital. Mm -hmm. Gwinnett Medical Center and Northside Hospital merged. So now we are under the Northside name. And that's exciting for what the future holds for us because Northside is going to be investing in our community. They already have. But I look forward to seeing what is going to come. That's amazing. Oh, my gosh. You have accomplished so much and have been, like you said, a part of so much growth in our community with with through the foundation and I I'm impressed, but I know a lot of our fo folks turning in, tuning in today, excuse me, are curious to, to learn a little bit more about you and, and how did you come to work for the Gwinnett Medical Center Foundation? So I think this is a super cool story. You know, there's, I don't know if you've ever stopped and thought about if this one person would not have came into my life, I may not be where I am today. Mm. And that person for me is Richard Tucker. When I was in graduate school, I worked at a golf resort and one mm -hmm. Saturday morning, Richard Tucker was playing golf and we struck up a conversation and he said, and he introduced himself to me as the president of the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce. And that's what he was at the time. So um, he said, if you ever need anything, let me know. So a few months later, I needed an internship. So one day I just show up at the chamber building and ask for Richard Tucker without an appointment. <laughs> now that I look back, I'm like, that is so bold. But Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I, was just, I was naive. I, I didn't know what I was doing. 
But he introduced me to Paige Havens, who was the marketing director there at the time. So she took me under her wing. I was her intern, got to participate in the very first Great Days of Service in Gwinnett, which was an awesome project. But I shared an office space with the folks that were about to open up the 1818 Club upstairs. So they said, hey, would you like to come be our evening receptionist? I'm like, yeah, I need some money. Yeah, I need a job. So I went and I was their receptionist, but it's there where I met my former boss, John Riddle, he hired me at the Gwinnett Medical Center Foundation. But the funny thing is, I originally turned down the job. Oh. And he called and he was like, no, you don't understand. This job was meant for you. And I'm so glad that he recognized that in me and because it really was meant to be. And I'm so thankful for that. That is such a cool story. Yeah, no, I I absolutely agree with you. Sometimes it's just this perfect storm. And and those people that come into your your life is just so carefully orchestrated without you even knowing. I mean, like the dominoes <laughs> fell in place. And yeah. Day, I'm so thankful I met Richard Tucker on the golf course that day. Or That's my, so cool. my life would not be where it is now. I love that. Yeah. No. And, and, you know, where you are today and you've talked about your journey, you know, how that's, how that's gone and really 20 years dedicating your career in, in just one, in one company that loyalty. You really don't hear about that very often. And I think that's really unique. So can you tell us a little bit about what's kept you there? Oh, well, for me, it's absolutely been the people. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier that I've worked with some of the most caring and philanthropic people. And that's so true. They've taught me, whoops, my earpiece fell out. Can you still hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have taught me so much in the way of giving their time, their energy, their resources, and Mm -hmm. they've just set such a good example for me. But one of the most exciting parts of what I do and one of the reasons Mm -hmm. that I stay is it's the impact that we have on the community. So I'm a sucker for a ribbon cutting and a grand opening because that's our hard work coming, you know, to fruition, like we made it happen. Yeah, and it's just a big celebration. And I just love that part is to celebrate the good that we've done. And I would be remiss for not saying my office staff, like we have a team of six here in the foundation. We've been together for a long time. We really have become like family through the years and they are a big part of why I stay because you've got to love who you work with. And I do. I absolutely agree. It makes it fun. It makes it feel not so much like work. <laughs> absolutely. You got that right. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Well, you've talked a little bit about the history so I kind of want to switch gears and let's talk about what's going on here and now. So what what is the current state of the hospital and the response to all things pandemic and COVID-19? What, what is, what's going on? Well, of course, I mean, COVID-19 has had an impact on hospitals across the country, and that doesn't exclude us. Mm-hmm. But Northside has handled it in such an awesome way. And our employees have been fantastic. They've been labeled as you know, heroes and angels, which they are. They have worked some super long hours. And I can imagine it's been, you know, taking a mental toll and physical toll on them. And, but they handle it with such care and they continue to do it each and every day. So that's been really awesome to see, but they're not the Mm -hmm. only superheroes. When this started, community members, individuals, businesses came to us and said, how can we help? What can we do Mm -hmm. to make an impact on what you guys are facing right now? So that's kind of started with the mask shortage. There was a national shortage of masks. So people pulled out their sewing machines, made thousands of masks to donate to the hospital to get us by until we got another shipment in. And then we figured out once you wear those masks for a while, it really hurts your ears, like the elastic mm-hmm. on them. Yeah. So um, then we did a call to action for anybody that could crochet or knit something called ear savers. And then people made those and donated those to help our staff. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was really cool. And then I can't, I mean, countless food donations. People have donated mm-hmm. lunches to entire departments and, and those are still coming in. And we are so grateful for those. Just anything to, you know, cheer up our staff when they have a moment to take a break. Yeah. So all of that has been the good part of COVID. Like I've seen mm-hmm. so much goodwill and, you know, caring come out of this. There are cards of gratitude lining the hospital walls. And it's just awesome. Oh. A lot of, you know, students have made homemade cards thanking our staff. So 
That's it, cool. It's been really awesome. And a lot of people may not know this, but Northside was super proactive and they put in modular ICU units. We were the first hospital in the Southeast to do this. Oh, and wow. They don't look modular at all. It looks like a super facility. Like it, their rooms are gorgeous. It's just beautiful. And but it helps us add another 71 patients a day that need those critical services. So they really stepped forward and did that because we needed the bed space. Like hospitals Absolutely. are busting at the seams right now. So that and another big thing that they've started working on that's not really COVID. Re well, I guess it could be COVID related, but not really, mm. is they have started a $57 million expansion of our emergency department in Lawrenceville, which will wow. double the size. And that's so needed. Like for a community this size, we needed a bigger emergency department. Good so point. that's going to come in play probably later this year. So we're really okay. excited about that. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Lots, uh, lots going on. That's for sure. No, all good things. And and you're right. I think there's so, I mean, this community just rallies and, and I love it. And, you know, so many servant hearts, you know, whether they're the employees on the front line or, you know, just community members coming in to say, Hey, we appreciate you. I, I know that's much needed. So yeah, I, I love you in this that. community is like no other. The Gwinnett it's, Bears yes. was a great example of that during the COVID yes, times. Absolutely. They pulled together people's wants and needs and matched it all up. It was amazing. Yeah. No, this it, it's I, I'm constantly impressed. I mean, I'm proud to be a Gwinnettian. I, I still a weird word to say, but I am proud. <laughs> okay. So how can our awesome community that we're bragging about how, how can we get involved with Gwinnett Medical Center Foundation or supporting just the hospital itself? How can we help? So, I mean, philanthropy will always be a part of what we do. Mm -hmm. Our Gwinnett Medical Center Foundation continues to exist with the Northside merger. So the money mm -hmm. that we raise will continue to stay in Gwinnett. Awesome. So that's awesome that it benefits something local. Mm -hmm. And we are... It, we have an ongoing effort for those grab and go snacks for the break rooms for our hospital associates and they'll, you know, to feed them lunches or whatever. We are going to continue to do that because it's so nice that they have that during their breaks. And then, of course, we have a big fundraiser coming up. Pink Winnet Pink 5K has been around for several years, but it's coming up October the 23rd. Okay. And people can help with that by sponsoring, creating a team. It's always really fun when you get your family and friends together and you do it in honor or in memory of somebody. And it's just fun to make a team. So that's something we need. And also just individual walkers and runners to sign up to register for that event would be great. So cool. if anybody's interested in any of those things, they can reach out to me and I'll point them in the right direction. Awesome. Awesome. And Ginger, we'll make sure we include a link to not only the website, but also your email. So that way folks can get in touch directly with you. Right. So, all right. I, I know you, we are fellow Rotarians and, and it's been a pleasure to to work with you in that capacity and, and to be able to, you know, spend quality time with you and, you know, being very civic minded that we are, I want to hear a little bit about your passions and in, in your community involvement, why you like to serve our great community. Oh, thanks, Colleen. Well, I firmly believe that everybody you meet in your journey of life has something to teach you. Mm -hmm. So during my past 20 years, I've really made it a point to try to attend every community event that I could be involved in charity events, just to be out there meeting people constantly, because I learned so much just by, you know, talking to people and hearing them on stage. And that's just been a big part of who I've been for the past 20 years. But right now, there's two big things that I'm involved with and that I'm super passionate about, and I've gotten so much out of it. And those are Leadership Winnet and Rotary. Mm -hmm. So with Leadership Winnet, it's not just about a leadership training course. It's some of that, but it's more about the relationships you build. I've got lifelong friendships out of that program and opportunities for engagement that I never would have dreamed of. Like it's been an unbelievable builder for me, both personally and professionally, and I will be forever grateful for that. I've served in a lot of volunteer roles. I'm currently on the Foundation Board of Trustees, and I'm just really enjoying my time there. The other big thing, of course, is Rotary that you mentioned. There are a lot of awesome Rotary clubs in Gwinnett. Mm -hmm. I just happen to be the incoming president of the Rotary Club of Sugarloaf that Colleen mentioned. We're so excited to have you as a new member. 
Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> but one of my parts about Rotary is the service. Of course, the motto is service mm-hmm. above self. But we're able to impact a lot of different charities throughout the year by being a Rotarian. And one of the best things is I get to involve my kids in that charity work. And just this past holiday season, we were at the Christmas canteen that the Aurora Theater puts on every year. And they posed the question, what's your favorite holiday tradition? And one of my kids said, oh, I like bringing the Salvation Army kettlebell. And the other kid was like, oh, I like serving the Annandale Villagers lunch on Christmas Eve and singing Christmas carols. And that was like a really aha moment for me. I'm like, I have done something right. Like my kids, <laughs> yeah. like they enjoy giving back and that's now become their favorite holiday tradition. So I would just encourage all you parents out there, involve your kids in doing good in the community, expose them the, to, to that because that's what's going to help not only Gwinnett thrive, but this country thrive in the future. I couldn't have said it better myself. You speak to my heart. (laughs) And that's exactly, I I feel, I feel exactly the same way. And it's, it's such a great thing to continue those traditions, but also to, to pass that service above self mentality to the next generation. It's it's really important. Yeah. We can't let this stop with us, you know, our, our children, our future and this community needs them and we are there to help guide that process. And no doubt. I, yeah, no, I love it. Well, Ginger, this has been a blast. I'm so glad that we got to connect through yes, Thrive. Thank you for having me. Yes. And I'm thank you for being here again. This has been a great conversation. And to for everyone tuning in to to this conversation on Thrive. We really hope that you connect with Ginger and find ways to get involved with the great work that she is doing at the Gwinnett Medical Center Foundation in helping our hospital workers continue to support the many needs in our community and continue to help us thrive. So Ginger, signing off. Thank you again. Bye, everybody. Bye.